the armor of God. Welcome, dear friend. I am so glad you have chosen to join me today as we embark on a powerful journey through Scripture to explore the concept of the armor of God. This profound topic is not just a theological idea, it is a vital aspect of our daily lives as believers. In a world filled with challenges, distractions, and spiritual battles, understanding how to equip ourselves with God's armor is essential for our faith walk. Every day, we encounter various struggles that can weigh heavily on our hearts and minds. Whether it's the pressures of work, the complexities of relationships, or the noise of societal expectations, it can often feel overwhelming. Moreover, as Christians, we face a spiritual battle that is unseen but very real. The enemy seeks to undermine our faith, sow seeds of doubt, and lead us away from the truth of God's Word. In these moments of trial and temptation, we must remember that we are not left to fend for ourselves. God has graciously provided us with armor to protect us and empower us to stand firm. Let's dive into Ephesians 6 10-18, where the Apostle Paul outlines this profound metaphor. In this passage, Paul uses the imagery of a Roman soldier, familiar to his audience, to illustrate the spiritual resources available to us. Each piece of armor represents a crucial aspect of our faith that equips us to face the challenges of life. By understanding and applying these elements, we can strengthen our spiritual resilience and deepen our relationship with God. As we explore this scripture together, I encourage you to open your heart and mind to what God wants to reveal to you. Consider how each piece of armor can be applied in your life, and reflect on the ways you can actively engage in the spiritual battle around you. Remember, this is not just about knowledge, it's about transformation. God desires for us to live victoriously, and by putting on the armor of God, we can walk in His strength and purpose. So, let us prepare ourselves for this enlightening journey. Together, we will uncover the richness of God's Word and learn how to stand strong in our faith, equipped with the armor that He has so lovingly provided. Scripture Reading Ephesians 6 10-18, KJV Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, understanding the armor. 1. Be strong in the Lord. Paul begins his exhortation by urging us to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. This powerful statement serves as a foundational principle for our spiritual lives. It reminds us that our strength does not come from ourselves but from a source far greater, God Himself. In a world that often emphasizes self-reliance and personal achievement, this call to depend on God's infinite strength can be both refreshing and challenging. When we think about being strong, we often equate it with physical prowess or mental fortitude. However, Paul shifts our focus from human strength to divine empowerment. This is a crucial distinction. Our own efforts and abilities can only take us so far, they are limited and prone to failure. In contrast, God's power is limitless, unchanging, and perfectly capable of sustaining us through every trial and tribulation we face. Take a moment to reflect on your own life. Are there areas where you feel weak, overwhelmed, or even defeated? Perhaps it's a challenging relationship, a demanding job, health issues, or spiritual doubts. These feelings of inadequacy are common, and it's important to acknowledge them rather than pretend they don't exist. God invites us to bring our weaknesses to Him, recognizing that His strength is made perfect in our weakness, 2 Corinthians 12 9. In those moments of struggle, we can invite God into our circumstances. This means actively seeking His presence through prayer, meditation, and Scripture. By doing so, we open ourselves to receive His power and guidance. Imagine what it would look like to surrender your burdens to Him, trusting that He will provide the strength you need to persevere. Moreover, being strong in the Lord also involves cultivating a deep relationship with Him. This relationship is nurtured through regular prayer, worship, and studying His Word. The more we know God, the more we can rely on His character and promises. As we immerse ourselves in His truth, we begin to see our challenges through His perspective, which often reveals opportunities for growth, healing, and transformation. As you reflect on this call to be strong in the Lord, consider practical steps you can take to invite His power into your life. Perhaps you can start each day with a prayer asking for His strength to face whatever lies ahead. Or, you might choose to memorize verses that remind you of His faithfulness and power, 
such as Philippians 4:13, I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. Being strong in the Lord is about shifting our reliance from ourselves to God. It is an invitation to experience His mighty power in our lives, especially in our moments of weakness. So, let us take a step back, assess where we need His strength, and intentionally invite God into those spaces, allowing His power to sustain and empower us as we navigate the challenges of life. 2. The Belt of Truth The first piece of armor that Paul mentions is the Belt of Truth. In the context of a Roman soldier, the belt was not merely an accessory, it was a crucial component that held the entire armor together. It secured the tunic in place and provided a foundation upon which the other pieces of armor rested. Similarly, truth is foundational to our faith and spiritual life. It is the bedrock that keeps everything else in our lives aligned and secure. In a world filled with lies, half-truths, and deceptions, the importance of truth cannot be overstated. We are constantly bombarded with conflicting messages from various sources, social media, news outlets, and even our own thoughts. These messages can lead us to doubt our beliefs, question our worth, and stray from the path God has set for us. Therefore, we must consciously choose to anchor ourselves in the truth of God's Word. As you reflect on the concept of the belt of truth, consider the truths that you need to hold on to today. What are the promises of God that resonate with your current circumstances? Perhaps you need to remind yourself that you are loved unconditionally, Romans 8 38-39, that you have been created with purpose, Jeremiah 29 11, or that God is always with you, even in difficult times, Isaiah 41 10. These truths serve as a protective barrier against the lies that the enemy tries to sow in our hearts and minds. Meditating on John 8 32, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, invites us to explore the liberating power of truth. Knowing the truth about who God is and who we are in Him frees us from the bondage of fear, shame, and guilt. It empowers us to live authentically and boldly, unencumbered by the weight of deception. When we embrace God's truth, we can navigate life's challenges with confidence and clarity. To practically apply the belt of truth in your daily life, consider establishing a routine that includes reading and meditating on Scripture. Start each day by reflecting on a specific verse that speaks to your situation or emotional state. Write it down, memorize it, and let it permeate your thoughts throughout the day. This practice will help you internalize God's truth and counteract the lies that may arise. Additionally, surround yourself with a community that values truth. Engage in conversations with fellow believers who encourage you to seek and uphold the truth of God's Word. Accountability can be a powerful tool in reinforcing the truths we hold dear. When we share our struggles and victories with others, we create an environment where truth can flourish. Moreover, be vigilant about the messages you consume. In a culture that often promotes relativism, the idea that truth is subjective, it's essential to discern what aligns with God's Word. Ask yourself, does this message reflect the truth of Scripture? Does it lead me closer to God or further away? By filtering the information we take in through the lens of truth, we can safeguard our hearts and minds. The belt of truth is a vital piece of spiritual armor that keeps us grounded in our faith. It equips us to stand firm against the lies and deceptions of the world. As we meditate on the truths of God's Word and make them a central part of our lives, we will experience the freedom and strength that comes from being anchored in His truth. So, let us put on the belt of truth daily, allowing it to hold everything else in our lives together as we navigate the complexities of our faith journey. 3. The Breastplate of Righteousness Next, we have the Breastplate of Righteousness, a crucial piece of armor that serves to protect one of our most vital areas, the heart. In the context of spiritual warfare, the heart symbolizes our emotions, desires, and the core of our identity. Just as a soldier's breastplate shields vital organs from physical harm, the breastplate of righteousness guards our hearts against the attacks of the enemy, who seeks to sow seeds of doubt, guilt, and shame. Righteousness, in biblical terms, refers to being in right standing with God. It is not merely about moral behavior or adhering to a set of rules, rather, it is a reflection of our relationship with Christ. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are clothed in His righteousness, 2 Corinthians 5 21. This means that God sees us through the lens of Christ's perfect righteousness, rather than our imperfections and failures. This truth is foundational to our identity as believers and serves as a constant reminder of who we are in Christ. However, while we are positionally righteous before God, our daily lives must reflect that righteousness through our actions and choices. This is where the practical application of the breastplate of righteousness comes into play. Consider the areas in your life where you may need to seek God's righteousness. Are there habits, attitudes, or behaviors that do not align with His ways? Perhaps there are unresolved conflicts, unconfessed sins, or patterns of thought that lead you away from living in accordance with God's will. Taking time for self-reflection is essential. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal any areas where you may be compromising your integrity or straying from God's path. 
This process of examination is not meant to induce guilt but rather to lead you to a place of confession and healing. When we acknowledge our shortcomings and bring them before God, we open ourselves to receive His grace and forgiveness. As 1 John 1 9 assures us, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Receiving God's grace empowers us to live rightly. It is through His grace that we are not only forgiven but also transformed. When we recognize the depth of His love and mercy, we are motivated to pursue righteousness in our daily lives. This pursuit involves making intentional choices that align with God's Word and reflect His character. It may mean extending forgiveness to someone who has wronged us, choosing honesty in difficult situations, or prioritizing time in prayer and scripture. Moreover, the breastplate of righteousness also serves as a reminder of our calling to reflect Christ in our interactions with others. As we embody righteousness, we become vessels of God's love and truth in a world that desperately needs it. Our actions can inspire others to seek the same relationship with Christ and experience the transformative power of His righteousness. To cultivate a lifestyle of righteousness, consider establishing spiritual disciplines that draw you closer to God. Regularly engage in prayer, asking for His guidance and strength to live according to His ways. Immerse yourself in Scripture, allowing it to shape your thoughts and actions. Surround yourself with a community of believers who encourage you to pursue righteousness and hold you accountable in your walk of faith. The breastplate of righteousness is a vital piece of armor that protects our hearts and affirms our identity in Christ. It reminds us of the importance of living according to God's ways and pursuing righteousness in our daily lives. As we seek His righteousness, confess our shortcomings, and receive His grace, we empower ourselves to live rightly and reflect His love to the world around us. Let us put on the breastplate of righteousness daily, guarding our hearts and aligning our lives with the truth of God's Word. 4. Feet fitted with the Gospel of Peace Our feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the Gospel of Peace, a powerful metaphor that emphasizes our role as ambassadors of Christ. Just as a soldier's footwear is essential for mobility and stability on the battlefield, our spiritual readiness enables us to move swiftly and effectively in sharing the message of peace that comes from the Gospel. This readiness is not merely about being prepared to defend our faith, it is about actively going forth to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and the peace He offers to a world in turmoil. The Gospel of Peace is central to our faith. It signifies the reconciliation we have with God through Jesus, who is our peace, Ephesians 2 14. This peace is transformative. It calms our anxious hearts, heals our wounds, and empowers us to extend that same peace to others. As followers of Christ, we are called to embody this peace in our lives and share it with those around us. Consider the question, how can you share the gospel of peace with those around you? This may seem daunting, but sharing the gospel can take many forms, and it often begins with simple acts of kindness and compassion. Look for opportunities in your daily interactions to be a source of hope and encouragement. A kind word, a listening ear, or a helping hand can serve as a powerful testament to the peace of Christ in your life. For instance, in your workplace, you might encounter colleagues who are stressed or overwhelmed. A genuine offer to help or a moment of encouragement can create an atmosphere of peace and show them the love of Christ. In your community, consider volunteering your time or resources to support those in need. Acts of service not only spread kindness but also open doors for conversations about your faith and the hope you have in Christ. Additionally, think about your relationships with family and friends. Are there opportunities to share the gospel of peace in your conversations? This could involve discussing how your faith has brought you peace during difficult times or sharing a verse that has encouraged you. Sometimes, simply living out your faith authentically can prompt questions and lead to meaningful discussions about the hope you have in Christ. Moreover, being fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace also involves being prepared to share the message of salvation. This means understanding the core tenets of the gospel and being ready to articulate your faith when opportunities arise. Equip yourself with scripture that highlights the peace found in Christ, such as Philippians 4 6-7, which assures us that God's peace transcends all understanding and guards our hearts and minds. In a world filled with conflict, anxiety, and uncertainty, the gospel of peace is a vital message that people desperately need to hear. As we go about our daily lives, let us be intentional about looking for opportunities to share this peace. Whether through our words, actions, or the way we respond to challenges, we can reflect the love and grace of God. To cultivate a lifestyle of being messengers of peace, practice being present in each moment. Pay attention to the needs of those around you and respond with compassion. Pray for opportunities to share your faith and for the courage to speak when the time is right. Having our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace means actively engaging in the world around us as messengers of Christ's love and peace. By looking for opportunities to spread kindness, hope, and the message of the gospel, we can make a significant impact in the lives of others. Let us embrace our calling to be ambassadors of peace, moving forward with confidence and purpose as we share the transformative power of the gospel in our daily interactions. 
5. The Shield of Faith. The Shield of Faith is a crucial piece of armor in our spiritual arsenal, serving as a powerful defense against the flaming arrows of the enemy. In ancient warfare, a soldier's shield was designed to protect them from projectiles, and in the same way, our faith acts as a protective barrier against the doubts, fears, and temptations that seek to undermine our trust in God. The imagery of the shield emphasizes the active role we must take in our spiritual battles, as faith is not a passive state but a dynamic force that requires engagement and intentionally. Faith is our confidence in God and His promises, even when circumstances seem uncertain or unfavorable. It allows us to stand firm in the face of adversity and to trust in God's goodness and sovereignty. As we reflect on Hebrews 11:1, 1, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see, we are reminded that faith is rooted in hope and assurance. It is the conviction that God is who He says He is and that He will fulfill His promises, even when we cannot see the outcome. Consider the doubts you may be facing today. Are there situations in your life that are causing you to question God's goodness or His plan for you? Perhaps you are dealing with health issues, financial struggles, relationship challenges, or feelings of inadequacy. These doubts can feel overwhelming and may lead you to question your faith. However, it is in these moments of uncertainty that we must lift our concerns up to God and ask Him to strengthen our faith. To actively use the shield of faith, begin by identifying the specific doubts or fears that are weighing on your heart. Write them down, and then take them to God in prayer. Be honest with Him about your feelings and uncertainties. God invites us to cast our cares upon Him, 1 Peter 5 7, and He desires to help us navigate our doubts with His truth. As you pray, ask God to reveal His promises to you. Spend time in Scripture, seeking verses that speak to your situation and remind you of His faithfulness. For instance, if you are struggling with fear, meditate on Isaiah 41 10, where God assures us, So do not fear, for I am with you, do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. These promises can serve as your shield, reinforcing your faith and protecting you from the enemy's attacks. Moreover, consider surrounding yourself with a community of believers who can support and encourage you in your faith journey. Sharing your doubts with trusted friends or mentors can provide you with additional strength and perspective. They can remind you of God's faithfulness in their own lives and help you see beyond your current struggles. In times of trial, it is also helpful to reflect on past experiences where God has proven Himself faithful. Remembering how He has worked in your life before can bolster your confidence in His ability to carry you through your current challenges. Keep a journal of these experiences, noting the ways God has answered prayers, provided for your needs, and brought you peace in difficult times. Finally, actively engage your faith by taking steps that align with your trust in God. This might involve making decisions that reflect your confidence in His provision, stepping out in obedience even when you feel uncertain, or sharing your testimony with others. Each act of faith reinforces the shield that protects you from doubt and fear, allowing you to stand firm against the enemy's attacks. The shield of faith is an essential tool for extinguishing the flaming arrows of doubt and fear that the enemy launches at us. By reflecting on our uncertainties, lifting them up to God, and seeking His strength, we can fortify our faith and remain steadfast in our trust in Him. Let us actively wield the shield of faith, grounding ourselves in the promises of God and surrounding ourselves with a supportive community so that we can face each day with confidence and assurance in His unwavering love and faithfulness. 6. The Helmet of Salvation The Helmet of Salvation is a vital piece of spiritual armor that plays a crucial role in protecting our minds. Just as a physical helmet safeguards a soldier's head from injury, the Helmet of Salvation shields us from the mental and emotional attacks that can arise in our daily lives. Our thoughts are powerful, they shape our beliefs, influence our actions, and can either lead us toward peace or plunge us into anxiety and despair. Therefore, it is essential to understand the significance of our salvation and how it can transform our mindset. The helmet of salvation serves as a constant reminder of the incredible gift we have received through faith in Jesus Christ. When we accept Christ as our Savior, we are not only forgiven of our sins but also granted eternal life and a new identity as children of God. This truth is foundational to our faith and provides us with a sense of security and hope that transcends our circumstances. In moments of doubt or fear, we can anchor ourselves in the assurance that our salvation is secure and that we are loved unconditionally by our Creator. In times of anxiety or despair, it is crucial to remember the words of Romans 8 38-39, which assure us that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This powerful passage emphasizes the unbreakable bond we have with God through our salvation. No matter what challenges we face or how overwhelming our emotions may become, we can take comfort in knowing that God's love is constant and unwavering. To effectively wear the helmet of salvation, we must actively guard our thoughts and focus on the promises of God. 
this involves being intentional about what we allow into our minds. In a world filled with negativity, fear, and uncertainty, it can be easy to become consumed by our worries and doubts. However, we have the power to choose where we direct our attention. By filling our minds with scripture, worship music, and uplifting conversations, we can cultivate a mindset that reflects the truth of God's promises. One practical way to keep your thoughts focused on His promises is to create a list of verses that speak to your identity in Christ and the hope of your salvation. Consider verses like John 3:16, which reminds us of God's love and the gift of eternal life, or Philippians 4:19, which assures us that God will meet all our needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Memorizing these verses can serve as a mental shield, helping you combat negative thoughts and reinforce the truth of your salvation. Additionally, practice mindfulness and prayer as tools for maintaining a healthy mindset. When feelings of anxiety or despair arise, take a moment to pause, breathe, and pray. Invite God into your thoughts and ask Him to help you focus on His truth rather than your fears. This practice not only helps to center your mind but also strengthens your relationship with God, reminding you of His presence and love. Surrounding yourself with a community of believers can also provide support in wearing the helmet of salvation. Engage in conversations with friends or family members who can encourage you and remind you of God's faithfulness. Sharing your struggles and victories can foster an environment of accountability and hope, reinforcing the truth of your salvation in your life. The helmet of salvation is essential for protecting our minds from the attacks of the enemy. It reminds us of our secure position in Christ and the hope we have in Him. By keeping our thoughts focused on His promises, memorizing Scripture, and engaging in prayer, we can guard our minds against anxiety and despair. Let us wear the helmet of salvation daily, allowing the truth of our identity in Christ to shape our thoughts and guide our actions, so we can live in the fullness of His love and grace. 7. The Sword of the Spirit. The final piece of armor mentioned by Paul is the Sword of the Spirit, which he identifies as the Word of God. Unlike the other pieces of armor, which serve primarily defensive purposes, the Sword of the Spirit is an offensive weapon. It is the only tool we have been given to actively engage in spiritual warfare and combat the lies and deceptions of the enemy. The Word of God is living and active, Hebrews 4:12, and when wielded with faith and understanding, it becomes a powerful instrument for overcoming the darkness that seeks to ensnare us. The sword of the Spirit is essential for spiritual warfare because it is through God's Word that we come to know Him and His will for our lives. It is the primary means by which God communicates with us, revealing His character, His promises, and His plan for our salvation. When we are well versed in Scripture, we are better equipped to discern truth from falsehood, to stand firm in our faith, and to share the Gospel with others. However, the power of the sword of the Spirit lies not only in knowing the Word but also in applying it to our lives. How often do you engage with Scripture beyond a cursory reading? Do you make it a habit to meditate on its truths, to memorize key verses, and to allow it to shape your thoughts and actions? The more we immerse ourselves in God's Word, the more it becomes a part of us, ready to be drawn forth in times of spiritual battle. One practical way to wield the sword of the Spirit is to make reading and studying the Bible a regular part of your daily routine. Set aside a specific time each day, even if it's just for a few minutes, to read a passage of Scripture and reflect on its meaning. Consider using a devotional or Bible study guide to help you dig deeper into the text and apply it to your life. As you make this a habit, you will begin to see the transformative power of God's Word at work in your heart and mind. Another way to engage with Scripture is through memorization. Committing key verses to memory equips you with a ready defense against the enemy's lies. When temptation strikes or doubts arise, you can draw upon these verses to remind yourself of God's truth and to stand firm in your faith. Choose verses that speak to your specific struggles or that affirm the promises of God, and make an effort to memorize them throughout your day. Finally, it is essential to remember that the sword of the Spirit is not just a tool for personal growth but also for sharing the Gospel with others. As you become more familiar with God's Word, you will be better equipped to articulate your faith and to offer hope to those who are lost or struggling. Be ready to share the reason for the hope that you have, 1 Peter 3:15, and trust that the Holy Spirit will use your words to touch the hearts of those you encounter. The sword of the Spirit is a vital weapon in our spiritual arsenal, empowering us to combat the lies of the enemy and to stand firm in our faith. By making the Word of God a central part of our lives through regular reading, meditation, and memorization, we equip ourselves with the truth necessary to overcome the darkness that seeks to ensnare us. Let us wield the sword of the Spirit with confidence, knowing that it is a living and active tool that can transform our lives and the lives of those around us. 8. Prayer. Paul concludes his exhortation on the armor of God with a powerful call to prayer. In the context of spiritual warfare, prayer is not merely an afterthought or an optional practice, it is our lifeline to God, enabling us to communicate with Him, seek His guidance, and draw upon His strength. It is through prayer that we cultivate our relationship with God, aligning our hearts and minds with His will and purpose for our lives. 
prayer is essential for several reasons. First and foremost, it allows us to express our thoughts, feelings, and concerns to God. He desires for us to come to Him with our burdens, anxieties, and joys. In Philippians 4 6-7, we are encouraged to not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. When we bring our concerns before Him, we not only release our worries but also invite His peace to guard our hearts and minds. Moreover, prayer is a means of seeking God's guidance and wisdom. In a world filled with choices and uncertainties, we often find ourselves at crossroads, unsure of which path to take. Through prayer, we can seek God's direction, asking Him to illuminate the way forward. James 1 5 reminds us, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. When we approach God in prayer, we open ourselves to His leading and the insights He provides. To make prayer a consistent and meaningful part of your life, consider committing to pray regularly, not just for yourself but also for others. Intercessory prayer is a powerful way to support those around us, lifting up their needs and concerns to God. This practice not only strengthens our relationships with others but also deepens our understanding of God's heart for His people. When we pray for others, we align ourselves with God's purposes and demonstrate love and compassion. One practical way to incorporate prayer into your daily routine is to set aside a specific time each day to connect with God. This could be in the morning, before meals, or in the evening before bed, whatever works best for you. Create a quiet space where you can focus and be free from distractions. Use this time to read Scripture, meditate on God's Word, and pray. You might start by thanking God for His blessings, confessing any sins, and then presenting your requests, both for yourself and for others. Additionally, consider keeping a prayer journal. Writing down your prayers can help you articulate your thoughts and feelings more clearly. It also allows you to track how God answers your prayers over time, which can be a source of encouragement and faith building. Reflecting on answered prayers can strengthen your trust in God and remind you of His faithfulness. Incorporating prayer into your life can also involve joining a prayer group or community. Engaging with others in prayer fosters a sense of accountability and support. It allows you to share burdens and celebrate victories together, creating a deeper sense of community and connection within the body of Christ. Whether it's a formal prayer meeting or informal gatherings with friends, praying together can amplify the impact of your prayers and strengthen your faith. Prayer is a vital component of our spiritual armor and an essential practice for every believer. It serves as our lifeline to God, enabling us to communicate with Him, seek His guidance, and intercede for others. By committing to pray regularly and intentionally, we can deepen our relationship with God and empower ourselves to navigate the challenges of life with His strength and wisdom. Let us embrace the call to prayer, making it a priority in our lives, and watch as God transforms our hearts and circumstances through this powerful practice. Conclusion As we wrap up this devotion on the armor of God, I want to encourage you, dear friend, to take what you have learned and apply it to your daily life. Remember, the armor of God is not just a metaphor, it is a practical guide for living a victorious Christian life. Equip yourself daily with each piece of armor, and stand firm against the challenges you face. Throughout this devotion, we have explored the profound significance of each component of the armor of God. From the belt of truth that keeps us grounded in God's Word to the shield of faith that protects us from doubt and fear, each piece serves a vital purpose in our spiritual lives. By putting on the full armor of God, we are empowered to withstand the attacks of the enemy and live according to God's will. As you go forth, I encourage you to reflect on the areas where you need to focus your attention. Perhaps you need to strengthen your grip on the belt of truth or seek God's righteousness more diligently. Maybe you need to wield the sword of the Spirit with greater confidence or engage in prayer more consistently. Whatever the case may be, know that God is with you, and He has equipped you with everything you need to stand firm in your faith. Remember, you are not alone in this spiritual battle. There is a community of believers who are walking alongside you, supporting you, and praying for you. Finally, I invite you to share your thoughts and reflections in the comments section below. What has resonated with you most throughout this devotion? How do you plan to apply the armor of God in your own life? Your comments and insights can be a source of encouragement and inspiration for others who are on a similar journey of faith.